Alright, so I wanted to give my thoughts on Hecky Butler pulling off a big upset over Ryochi Taguchi over in Japan on uh, Sunday, yesterday. Um, actually, it wound up actually being on, on Saturday night, um, in the U.S. anyway, because uh, the fights actually started uh, several hours earlier than I had originally expected. Um, I guess they didn't. They actually didn't show the Hiroto Kyoguchi versus Vince Paras fight live. I thought I had missed it, but apparently they they actually didn't show it on the uh, the TBS the the TBS station in Japan. But they did show Taguchi versus Butler, and I did manage to catch the entire fight. And the entire fight is available on YouTube as well. Um, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to check out if you haven't seen it yet. But um, yeah, Butler put Butler pulled off a good upset and. I mean, what I consider to be the fight of that night. You know, I guess if you consider that to be a part of the 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 day and the night's festivities or the or the weekend of boxing, as it were. Um, you know, matching it up against uh, Warrington and Selby, uh, Stevenson and Jack, Russell and Diaz. Um, I think you know Warrington Selby definitely was it was uh, pretty fun to watch. Um, Stevenson and Jack and and Diaz and Russell, um, not quite as much due to the I guess the strategies that you might say that Diaz and Jack kind of took in there as well as um, the fact that it seemed like Russell and Stevenson were more outworking them in order to either salvage a victory and or draw um, as opposed to really outfighting them. Um, so it led, led to those fights been not exactly like, like almost like with those, those firecrackers that don't, that don't completely pop off and explode. But this fight was pretty much a non-stop explosive reaction from the opening bell. Um... Hecky Butler went in to uh, pretty much show Taguchi that he wasn't scared of him. He wasn't intimidated by the the height difference between the two of them, the the length difference between the two of them. Taguchi's a very tall guy, a pretty pretty big, well built guy for a hundred and eight pounder. Um, you know, I think he, he'd probably deceive a lot of people for if you said like, "Hey, that guy's a light flyweight," considering how tall he is, five foot six, uh, maybe even a shade taller than that. Hecky Butler, for what it's worth, is five three. And um, Taguchi's a guy that, I mean, uh, he, I think he's probably um, somewhat well-known in part due to the fact that he was the first guy to actually go the distance with uh, Nagi Inoue, who himself is, you know, a pound-for-pound pound type of a fighter nowadays. And um, also being a guy that, of course, um, not only won the WBA title, but then went on to unify against Milan Melindo for the IBF title uh, successfully and also won the Ring Magazine title in the process of doing that. Um, so he was, a, he was a reasonably heavy favorite going here, in here against Hecky Butler, as well as the fact that, I mean, not only with, the, with that degree of clout behind him, but also because of the fact that Butler had lost his own WBA 105-pound belt um, before he moved up to 108. He lost it to um, Byron Rojas in a fight where Byron Rojas pretty much used a very high-energy, high-paced, high-output, swarming style in order to uh, be able to... Uh, just push Hecky Butler to the limit and even beyond the limit in their fight. Um, and so can, given that if you, any of you guys have seen Taguchi's past fights, anybody that has seen Taguchi's past fights um, would know that he's a very high output type of a fighter, a very high output type of a fighter, as well as somebody with pretty good feet, good, good footwork, a good ability to cut off the ring by and large, and also just a guy that's, um, that has a very good punch variety. So a lot of the times, because of the fact that he's able to mix up so many shots from so many different angles, um, it could be really difficult to be able to figure out exactly how best to defend against that. Um, but what Butler did was, it was just very clever, and things that he's done in the past in, in some fights, where he was very much in the pocket against um, Taguchi, and he was able to kind of lure Taguchi into, I guess, um, Taguchi probably... And I mean, I think it was in part him luring Taguchi and also in part Taguchi probably th like looking at the Byron Rojas fight and thinking, okay, I'm going to fight Butler the same way that Rojas did it. I'm just going to swamp this guy with high volume, high energy, high output. And he tried to do that, but um, in the early goings of the fight at least, it seemed like Butler was just very, very quick on his feet, very quick on his feet, very quick with his hands. He had the hand speed advantage, he had the foot speed advantage, and the, th the thing that, like I'm saying, that he's done in a lot of his past fights is he's able to kind of change the angle and change the tra trajectory of what he's doing, whether it's with his hands or with his feet or with his shoulders, doing the shoulder roll with his head or what have you. He's able to do that very, very quickly. Um, he has very, very, like, cat-like -right reflexes, very, very quick reflexes um, because of the fact 
And because of that fact, it was almost like Taguchi would almost be set to throw one shot. That shot would miss. Butler would counter over the top or he'd counter up under it and um, would follow up with, a, with a, just a fast handed combination. Um, and sometimes it was like kind of shoe shiny where like there wasn't a lot on the shots. But they were coming so fast and with um, such rapidity, you know, and, and repeatedly so, that he was able to, I think, kind of flay um, Taguchi's head back a couple of times, or at the very least knock Taguchi off balance, whereby Taguchi wouldn't necessarily be able to rattle off that four, five, six punch combo that he's used to being able to hit certain guys with once he's able to track them down with his footwork. Um, and so Taguchi, I mean, Butler did that repeatedly um, in the early rounds. And um, Taguchi, you know, he had, a, he had a moderate degree of success. And I think um, even that moderate degree of success kind of fooled him into thinking, okay, well, you know what, I don't think Butler can keep this pace up. I think he'll get tired, like he kind of did in the, in the Raw's fight. Um, you know, of course, going into the Raw's fight, there was some people saying that, you know, that Butler was having trouble making the weight and that, that kind of occurred after the fact. Um, for Butler's team, Butler didn't necessarily make any excuses for himself outright. Uh, but, um, you know, since he had moved up to 108, he had looked just a little bit more, like, like, like he had a little bit more pep in his step. Like he had just a little bit more energy. Like he was like a higher energy fighter um, that, of once he had moved up. And he especially showed it here against uh, Taguchi. Um, as I got into the middle rounds, it seemed like Taguchi was able to kind of find his measure a bit better. And it did seem like Butler was starting to slow down just a tad. And like that just a tad where it's not even like he's slowing down precipitously where it's not even like he's like you you could see that he's visibly slowing down you could just see that there was just that slight you know maybe very like a hundredth of a second lack of um extra bit of snap on what he was doing with his feet with his hands etc where Taguchi was able to get a better beat on him and Taguchi was able to kind of keep up the same pace he's a very well conditioned fighter a guy that you know like I said he's he'll he'll swarm you with t tons of punches I remember against Juan Jose Landaeta he threw I think it was over 100 punches around for, for that fight until he eventually stopped Landetta with just the, that high volume pressure style. But here against um, Butler, it seemed like he was starting to have a bit better success once he was keeping it more so at mid to long range where he was using that jab, he was using the distance, he was kind of measuring them out and then tossing the right hand afterwards and then, you know, maybe throwing an uppercut afterwards. Um, but it seemed like his typical way of doing things where he would kind of throw... One, two, three, four, five. He said, you know, he would kind of build up into these these long strings of combos. Um, was kind of backfiring on him against Butler because with him trying to open up into those kind of long strings of combos, all that did was give Butler even more opportunity to, to just capitalize with his faster hands. And even if he got hit with those first two shots from Taguchi, he would be able to kind of like roll with them and take some of the sting off of them and then roll right into like a five punch combination of his own. And um, at the very least, even if they weren't these kind of thudding, powerful shots that were, um, you know, uh, hurt, like outright hurting Taguchi, because Taguchi's got a very good chin. Like I said, you know, he went the distance. With Inoue took some of Inoue's best shots um, back when Inoue was at 108 and um, was able to take him in stride. Uh, but, you know, T Butler was definitely giving him pause. And I think just the, 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 the kind of surprise um, speed that he had on some of those shots you know, and, and with the fact that he bloodied um, Taguchi's low nose numerous times, although he did have a very good cut man team and everything, they were able to kind of keep that nose from just flowing out freely um, round after round. They were able to kind of clot it until eventually, you know, Butler would be able to kind of get the, the blood flowing again. But um, down the stretch, it was it, it started to become more so like a war of attrition where it was just, um, you know, it was a battle of conditioning and it was a battle of uh, Taguchi's timing versus Butler's speed. And it seemed like, you know, there, there were certain moments where Taguchi, it wasn't even certain rounds, but certain moments where Taguchi's speed would win out. And there were certain moments where Butler's, or excuse me, where Taguchi's timing would win out. And then there were certain moments where Butler's speed would win out. And it was just very much tit for tat. You know, one guy would land a good combination, the other one would immediately answer back with an excellent combination or an excellent single shot, you know, that managed to either stun or put an opponent on edge or maybe even cause an opponent to uh, cause one of the two to, to try to clinch the other one in order to try to, you know, get a, a slight bit of reprieve before resetting finally. Um, of course, finally, um, Taguchi managed to drop um, Heki Butler in... Damn, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting which round it was now. I don't remember if it was the 11th round or if it was the, the final round. But he did manage to, uh, actually I think it was the 11th round, um, where uh, Taguchi managed to, to drop 
Um, Butler with just a per- picture perfect left hook. They they both kind of were at the same distance. They both threw a left hook at the same time. Taguchi's got there first. You know that was one of those moments where the timing was able to overwhelm the speed in that case. And uh, Butler went back. You know he wasn't he wasn't tremendously hurt, but it was just one of those shots where it, like he boom, it just caught him at the perfect moment. And you know while he was throwing his own hook, so. You know, he fell back. Um, he kind of actually caught himself with his gloves. He didn't completely, like, outright just, like, his back hit the canvas. He kind of, like, caught himself with his gloves and then, like, kind of, like, sat down. Um, you know, he was able to get up, was able to recover. It was at the end of the round. He came back in uh, for the next round um, ready to go. And, you know, they just they just threw hands the, re- the rest of the fight. And it, w- it happened that um, even though it looked like the ref wasn't actually didn't actually call a knockdown, uh, the judges actually did count it as though it was a knockdown. But um, unfortunately for Taguchi, that was not enough for him to actually get the W. It was kind of funny because it actually very much resembles um, Butler's previous fight against Milan Malindo, which actually is how um, Butler was able to get this fight with Taguchi because Butler, had, um, Butler was a mandatory for Milan Malindo for the IBF title. Um, he lost a close split decision, a controversial split decision in the Philippines where the IBF ordered an immediate rematch. Um, but what wound up happening was, um, because of the fact that Kosa Tanaka moved up out of the division and Ken Shiro had his own mandatory positioning to deal with at the time, um, Takuchi's team made an offer to Melindo to unify with him instead of, um, the likes of Tanaka or Shiro. Um, so they wound up taking that offer, but that offer was also, um, it came with, uh, the string attached basically that whoever won that fight would have to then defend that belt, the IBF belt, the IBF portion uh, anyway, at the very least of, of um, that unification against Hecky Butler as the mandatory. Um, so, of course, uh, Butler was able to get that shot against Taguchi, and he managed to win it. And, uh, man, you know, it's just a, a great win for him. Um, you know, tough break for Taguchi, but, you know, there's, I don't think there's any shame whatsoever in him having lost to Butler. You know, Butler has been one of the premier fighters at the lower weight classes. Um, you know, I think some of, the, some of that might have to do with um, things outside of his fighting ability as well. But, um, the fact of the matter is the man can fight. The man can box. He's a very good boxer. He's a very good fighter. Um, he's very good at utilizing a few different styles. He's good on the inside. He's good on the outside. He's very good defensively. He's good at rolling that defense into his own offense. Um, it's kind of funny because I've, I've seen in the past certain, certain people compare him to the likes of Floyd Mayweather and then other people compare him to the likes of Roman Gonzalez. And it, it always just kind of amuse, amused me that People will kind of compare him to either or both of those guys at the same time, considering how disparate their styles would seem to be. But it's just really more so an, a, a fact that Butler himself uses almost like an amalgamation of styles. Where it's like he'll pressure you, but he'll pressure you in almost that kind of high, highly defensive way. Where it's like he's constantly pivoting, constantly moving, constantly moving his feet, making those like little abrupt, subtle movements with his shoulders, with his head, tucking his chin down in his chest, behind his left shoulder. Um, and it's kind of funny, like, or even sometimes turning southpaw, like he occasionally does, very occasionally. Um, he doesn't typically fight that way, but interestingly enough, he actually is a left-handed guy, um, just naturally, even though he fights in the orthodox stance. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, he, he manages to get right back into the, to the swing of things. Um, I don't even necessarily think this is any tough loss in terms of, uh, the, the, the stakes and, ter- and uh, the, the status of the 108-pound division because of the fact that before Butler had been upset by Baron Rojas, he was looking to try and unify and collect all the belts at 105 pounds. He wanted to unify that whole division and prove himself to be the best fighter there. So to me, I really don't have many doubts that he would try to do the same at 108 pounds. And especially with the increased attention on the lighter weight classes, what with um, you know, HBO showcasing Chocolatito and, and now Suiza Ketsurungvisai and Juan Estrada with ESPN showcasing Joanna Kass and Kaya Fai coming up now too. Um, you know, with the fact that you know, we've had, we've seen um, bantamweight fights on PBC, we have the bantamweight World Boxing Super Series coming up. Um, big fight this coming week with uh, Nai Inoue and um, and Jamie McDonald with a lot of um, a lot of uh, you know things that that that'll um, change the way the future might go for the bantamweight division and some of the low weight classes as a whole. And you know, Butler's just one of those guys that you know he's been plugging away at um, 105 pounds and now 108 pounds for so many years. Um, has racked up actually a pretty pretty nice record <laughs> if you look at some of the guys he's beat, the, the likes of um, Kosanati Joyi and, um, and, I mean, Taguchi really stands as the, the clear top name now. I mean, you know, the, the biggest win of his career, uh, most certainly. Um, I could definitely see him potentially rematching Baron Rojas at some point in the future as well. Um, but, I mean, even aside from that, 
you know, there's Ken Shiro out there, you got Angel Acosta, and you got, um, you know, Pedro Gavada, Ganega Lopez, number of fighters, and um, that's pretty much it, man. That's, that's all I got to say on this one, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.